welcome. We're really excited to have you here. I really want to get into who Colmy Group is prior to this webinar starting. And that's really important for you to know that our team has spent decades managing programs and portfolios in the tens of millions. And we're constantly frustrated with the limited tools available to manage our portfolio as well. Then we discovered data-driven PPM, or project and portfolio management. And it was a revolution that we decided to make it our prof professional focus. Um, just a little bit more about us. We are global, but we're based out of Phoenix, Arizona. And our change pathway transforms your team into change superheroes. Um, our pathway is a people-focused approach that creates a sustainable change and maximizing the true power of your Clarison investment. So we're really excited to be able to talk about change management today, have some good insight for you. This is a rich webinar. I'm really excited um, for Kelly to be presenting as well today. And without further ado, I'd like to introduce Kelly Smith to you. So she has 10 years of executive level experience leading teams through minor and major organizational changes. Her current role is leading projects and change management consulting for Colmy Group. And she's a pro size certified change management practitioner and has direct experience with training and coaching at all levels. So Kelly, we are ecstatic that you're here today. And her co-host is Kim Essendrup. And Kim is a PMP certified project manager and a PMI registered education provider with over 20 years of experience managing projects, programs, and PMOs. He is the co-founder and partner of Comey Group. Welcome to you both. We're so excited to have you here today. How about we get this webinar started? Yeah, thanks for the warm welcome, Lauren. How are you, Kim? Doing good. Thanks, Kelly. I really liked our, our pre-roll music today. I don't know if you got if our listeners got a chance to listen to that, but it was that was pretty groovy. Way groovy. All right, so we're excited to talk to you today about empowering your PMO with change management. And we're going to take it kind of high level. We're going to have a little bit of fun with some, uh, I guess, our, our comic book that we're going to walk through today. Um, but we hope you enjoy um, our, our webinar today as we give you a bit of an overview on change management. Uh, so Kelly, do you want to get us kicked off here? It would be my pleasure. So today, this is the second in our series, Empower Your PMO. So these webinars are designed to help you empower your PMO and implement the tools that you'll need to be successful. Our last webinar, if you caught it, was Crushing Conversations with your C-Suite, and you can get a replay of that or see that on our YouTube channel. So today we're going to talk about activating the powers of organizational change management. But Kim, did you have a response before that? Oh, I did. Yeah, I was going to jump in there. If you did get a chance to check out our previous webinar, Question Conversation with your C-Suite, I recommend you go check it out. We break down your typical executive persona, archetypes, uh, comic book go with our theme on our, on our webinar series and and talk about a couple different tactical ways that you can approach conversations with your c-suite um, and how to manage that conversation in a successful way both for you them and your your project awesome so on today's episode we'll be providing you with a scenario and we're going to talk about what's the win in utilizing change management we'll share our story with you that focuses on organization and also assembling our team We'll talk about planning the mission and what it looks like when the mission is complete. And at the end of all of that, we're gonna leave some time for questions and ask, answers so you'll be able to ask our team some questions. And finally, we'll give you the opportunity to see what's on next time. That's right. Um, now, Kelly, I know we're here to talk about organizational change management or OCM. We may refer to it as that for short, uh, but it seems like every organization and every professional that I speak with has a different perception of what OCM is and what it does. Um, so before we jump in, uh, let's do a quick poll and find out you know, from, from our, our, our attendees here, what does organizational change management mean to you and your organization? We'll give you just a minute to, to do that just so we have an idea of what everybody's at. And okay, let's see what, what our responses were. looks like for most people, yeah, we've got a pretty good alignment on what change management is. 
So Kelly, Kelly, you want to uh, take us forward now how, how we approach OCM, which I think it's pretty good that most of our audience is pretty aligned on that. Yeah, it's perfect. I'd be happy to. So as some of you might have noticed, our world is changing. So OCM is a tool that we can use to support you in leading your organizational through that, through any kind of successful change that you're um, facing right now. So at the Colme Group, we use ProSize change management techniques because they're evidence-based and they're backed by those 20 years of research. And by incorporating change management into the implementation of projects, we see six times improvement on those projects. They are two times more likely to stay on budget and five times more likely to stay on schedule, Kim. Which, you know, for anything you can do that can give you that much of an improvement in your odds of success is certainly worth paying attention to. And one of the things about OCM that we really like and really dig is the people focus of OCM that starts with the people. So can you talk just a little bit about that aspect? I can. And, and the cool thing about organizational change management is they really define it as the science of managing people through change. So this is a social science as a re response to people's reactions to change. It involves moving an organization from a current state into a new way of being or a new normal. So change is inevitable in today's climate. As many of you are experiencing, we're consistently transforming the way that we do work. Organizational change is a result of a collection of individuals changing. So organizations are entities. They don't change. People do. So we consider people the heartbeat of the organization. They're the living and breathing things that make organizations run. We need people, we value them, and we honor their change journey. Yeah, and that's really the key, right? It's not just the science of change, but the science of helping individuals through that change, right? It's true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and so we see this as an investment. So OCM is an investment in getting leadership the tools that they need to support that people side of change. And there's a lot of benefits that we associate with this. So OCM can help increase the chances of project success. It can support clarity about the messaging and improve communication with team members. Um, the other thing it does is help make changes happen faster, which is cost effective, and we know that we love that. Um, it provides a system or a methodology for change, increasing the likelihood of change readiness. And most importantly, OCM works to better people's lives. So it does so by prioritizing people. And this really empowers employees to embrace and be comfortable with change. So the process allows us to do things like um, create space for a feedback loop for managers, employees to talk about opportunities as they arise. Right, and, and so thanks for that. I think that really helps clarify how, how we approach OCM. But let's talk a little bit more about how change management is different from and relates to project management, because a lot of us, you know, listening on this might have a more project management background that's certainly more common. Um, and so if as I as a project manager or a, a PMO leader, um, if I have project management skills, do I really need another superpower uh, to, to do this kind of thing? <laughs> right. And I am always a fan of, of getting more superpowers under my belt. So I hope that you all feel the same. Um, but it's a great question. Change management really works best, best when integrated with project management and also a strong leadership. So you'll see that, that, that triangle on your screen. There's a leadership and sponsorship um, portion, a project management portion, and a change management portion. So we want those three to be working together. Um, there can be crossover on what change management and project management focuses on, but there is a distinction between the two. So on your slide, you'll see that project management um, supports the technical side of change. And I know that there are probably some project managers on the phone, so you know that you're concerned with fulfilling requirements of, you know, time, staying on schedule, the budget, the scope, quality, and so, so much more. Change management addresses that human side or the people side of change. So change managers are often concerned with things like preparing people in the areas of awareness or desire, ability, and adoption. So together, these two disciplines or heroes um, can help us create change. It can help us create that change that's sustainable. 
It'll help us improve adoption. And we are all about making happy team members. Yeah, and I like the way of thinking and that while project management is officially done at the project, CM has to keep going, change management has to keep going to constantly reinforce the change. Um, and so what I'm curious about, if our audience can help us uh, with another poll, is where is your organization right now? Do you feel like your organization is change ready? And let's go ahead and close that poll. I'm really curious to see what our results are. And it looks like, uh, no, most organ we do have, actually we've got a, a 30 some percent that do feel like you're change ready. Congratulations, that's really good. I, was, I think that's above the curve. Um, and most of the rest of us are challenged over 60% uh, change resistant. So I think that's that's pretty, pretty typical, wouldn't you say, Kelly? I would, yeah. yeah. Yep. So now change management is really fundamental and of course important and that's why we at Colmy Group have dedicated a practice to it. And having delivered so many projects just as project managers in our career before then, we've seen a lot of change efforts fail and we've seen a lot of them succeed. So we have kind of a unique and very hard learned appreciation for the value of change management. Yeah, we've helped a lot of our clients with free change management assessments and high level planning so that we can really focus on that change management for the organization and the value of change management for their organization. Right. And coming from a really strong background of project management and, and portfolio management, that's kind of how we like to approach it. And you'll probably sense that through our webinar today is we are very strong on pro, uh, project management and, and our capability there as well as driving change. and. Uh, incorporating change management as we've really seen a huge benefit in that and that's what we want to share with you today. But this is a superhero themed webinar, isn't it? So let's have our heroes assemble. In our last chapter, our last uh, webinar, Crushing Conversations with Your C-Suite, we did break out some executive personas and we talked about ways to manage conversations um, with those personas. And one of those that we talked about was uh, the PMO powerhouse. That was our hero, which represents you, just to make it a little fun. And I really, because I really like our superhero theme on our webinars. Um, and this persona uh, represents you or your PMO. And if you're on this webinar, you're the kind of project manager um, who likes to nerd out about this stuff. And you're probably already a superhero in your own right. So what we want to talk about today is trying to get you some more superpowers. Now, what you have to work with is what we call our League of Leaders, just to keep in the superhero theme. And in our last chapter, we talked about how our hero powered up her communication skills with her C-suite by recognizing that sponsor support can really make or break her projects. And change management, we really dig into this a lot deeper. Learning and approaching each leader individually based on their own terms and their own communication styles and using that feedback to level up our skills and how we do is really key to success. And so for our story today, um, let's take our audience through the story and just to have a, a use case that we can relate back to a concrete example is the story of our PMO powerhouse, our hero, as she undertakes the mission to implement a project intake process. And we picked this one because implementing PPM tools, this is a really common use case. Uh, we want to find a way where all projects are submitted or new, new ideas for uh, initiatives come into a common funnel so we can keep those under control, we can understand what they are, and we can make intelligent, informed decisions on which ones we take ahead and which ones we maybe defer. And we'll refer back to that through the course. So Kelly, can you take us through the mission we're going to go through today to illustrate change management? I can. Thanks, Kim. And so the mission, just to reiterate, um, Kim just mentioned, it's to create a single standardized project intake process. And what we'll use that for is to get solid data to make informed decisions about project prioritization. But like many heroic teams, those first steps might not be as smooth as we hope. Um, so here at Colmay Group, we often see intake and prioritization as a pain point that's an opportunity for change management. So some obstacles we've noticed in the past are oftentimes people are using different processes or none at all. And um, everybody thinks they're right and they're used to doing the old things their own way, their old way. So um, secondly, each business unit ha might have a bis different business need. Um, 
So we want to focus on creating a single process that captures the information that everyone needs. And finally, there is office politics to consider. So like we said in chapter one, the superpowers that you have may not always take you to where you want to go. They may not take you as far forward as you'd like to see. So there's always room to level up. As a project or PMO leader, you have many superpowers. Everyone on this phone call does. Um, by adding change management resources, that increases those powers and gives strength to change initiatives. And the result of that, um, what we see is a better chance for, your, for success in your projects and for you to lead the organization towards greater change competency. So this is where a new player comes in, right, Kim? That's right, our new superhero character, which is the magnificent OCM. Yes. And, and our new character <laughs> is a guru of change management that can help you navigate change from the very beginning. She is so powerful looking, yes. So, so because she's powerful looking, we know that she has superpowers. And for her, <laughs> well, that, she's, she's got a cape. She has a cape too. So that's she, and she has a cape, yeah. and I'm wearing mine today. I hope you are yeah. as well. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we know that she's mastered a change management methodology. The magnificent OCM has vast experience in small and large changes. Also, she really truly understands how to help people through change and holds valuable professional certifications that have prepared her as an expert. So now that we've got some help making sure that we are on the right path, it is time to meet your sponsor. Oh, Kim has the best monster truck voice on the earth. <laughs> so that's right, Kim. Um, sponsorship plays a vital role in organizational change, and it's a key aspect to the success of your change management projects. Right, and it's, it's really important to understand your sponsors and how you need to work with them to enable them and actually coach up to them to help make your change success, right? Absolutely. So by using tools like the ProSize Sponsor Competency Assessment, we can quantify your leader's ability to support your OCM project. So if you see on your screen, we look at things like visibility. Will the sponsor be active and visible? That's key, you'll hear that a lot today. Networking, do they have a strong network? Are they, will they be able to build a coalition? And communications, are they great speakers? Will they be able to convey the message of the change? So that brings us to our next poll, which is what support ability does your leader lack most? And we'll give you a moment to plug in your results. Okay, Lauren, I think that's good. The results are awesome. So, so this is confidential, just so everybody knows. Um, but the, the ability that your leaders lack most, 45% said communications, 0% said networking, which is very interesting, and 55% says, says visibility. Easy for me to say. Um, which is great. I'm glad that you all are here because we do talk a lot about sponsor visibility today. Right. And what, one of the tools that Kelly just talked about is are these, these uh, assessments that are out there, especially part of the ProSite tool set. Um, what's really exciting about them is they actually, uh, not just the tools, but the whole practice of organizational change management uses science, uh, tested science to understand human behavior and help you uh, understand how to respond to it. That's right. That's right. Um, there's there's a big, huge book actually full of research that that has been compiled as a result of the the ProSci study. So, based on a lot of facts. So, as we look back to our screen in our example, you can see with the bars above each of our superheroes, you can see that gut check in yellow is great at communication, while Mr. Factual, who's sporting the green outfit, has a strong coalition. However, neither of them has the ability to be active and visible. Um, most of the C-suite right now has a lot going on and they can't commit to what they need to do for organizational change management as a lead. Um, so this is a problem because sponsor engagement is vital for OCM success. Right, and one other thing I wanna point out is the assessment doesn't actually put your sponsors into colored pajamas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, it, it uh, you, you, can, you can see that yourself, I guess. But in our story today, let's talk about a scenario where your sponsor is, let's pick the rising star, 
and you need to prepare your sponsor to support your change. Right, so the rising star, but so for those of you who have attended um, these webinars, this webinar series and attended the first call in the series, you may recall that the rising star is newer to the C-suite, um, which means he has time to be highly engaged on this project. Plus, he's really, really motivated to get a big win. He's a great speaker, which is the reason why he ended up as an executive. But with that said, he's too new to have a, new, a really strong, good network. Um, so we need to give them some support in developing those connections. And as we learned last time, he can be a little bit tentative. He may need some coaching and some historical perspective of, of what's been done in the past in the organization. So with this guy, you may have to manage up a little bit with him. So for this reason, and, and, and really if we, were, if we picked any of the, the um, superheroes, personas as a sponsor, um, we need to know um, the traits of the sponsor, their strengths, and we need to have the tools to assess and support them. So that's why the magnificent OCM is here to help. That's right. And, and how you, of course, maybe it goes without saying, but I'll say it anyway, how you would approach your sponsor is going to depend very greatly on the, their nature and their capability for communications and where their strengths and weaknesses lie. Uh, but either way, it's uh, because there are sponsors and it's our project we're in charge, it's on us to help prepare our sponsors and manage up so that they can be successful and our change can be successful as well. That's correct. That's right. So if you haven't caught wind of this yet on this call, <laughs> sponsor visibility is key. Um, sponsors often think that they're solely needed at the beginning of the project or they're just there to make these big, huge executive decisions. Um, the fact is, is that sponsors need to be involved throughout the life cycle of the project. They do need to make those big, huge decisions, but they also need to participate in actions like communicating the change and also supporting coalition building. Right. And so coalition building, because we're talking potentially sponsors, plural. So let's talk a little bit more about that, if that's all right, Kelly. Not just um, coalition building is not just an activity that we do in change, but it's also an important exercise that we need to coach our executives to do on their level, right? Correct. So it gives us the opportunity to talk with them about teaming up. You know, how do you build your co coalition? So ideally in a project, we'll have one primary sponsor and that primary sponsor should build the coalition to support the change and the magnificent OCM will be there to help them with that. So this is especially important if a change is enterprise wide. So sponsors will want to solicit executives charged with other business units that are affected by the change that they're going through. So this helps us gain support from the other leadership and staff in those business units or departments. Right. And just to, just to take a step back and look at the skills and the capabilities that we gain as we learn how to perform proper, good, good, strong change management, they're all skills that we as professionals are going to learn and help us develop our own careers. I mean, here we are coaching up, coaching executives, helping manage and helping develop our communications. And those are skills that you apply not just to change management in your initiatives, but are going to be great in helping you develop as a professional. So true, so true. All right. And so look, just to quickly recap, we have our mission, uh, which is we were going to implement an intake process. Uh, we prepared our sponsor to help build a coalition and provide support. Right, and so once we've got that mission, our mission should we choose to accept it, um, and have begun to prepare our sponsors, we can begin to dive deeper into our change management tools and actually planning the mission. Right. And this is, there is one particular change management tool that is, we probably start with, that is rapidly becoming one of my favorites, um, not just as an approach to change, but also as a way to assess the state of an existing service project or change, and that is ADCAR. Yes. So I love the ADCAR model. I feel like I need a t-shirt that says, we love ADCAR. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one of the tools that we use for assessing change readiness at an individual level. And what this does is it guides, it helps us guide activities at an organizational level. So as you can see, ADCAR is an acronym. Um, on your screen, you will see awareness stands for the need for change. Desire is the desire to support the change knowledge, knowledge in how to change, 
the ability to demonstrate skills and behaviors, and reinforcement to make the change stick. Right, and that's Adkar, not Akbar, like Admiral Akbar for our Star Wars fans. Uh, and for those of us who happen to be project uh, project management happy hour listeners, our podcast we just did a podcast episode on Adkar specifically. Um, so if you want to, you can go and check that out, and we'll give you a link for that. Uh, but in that podcast, and also just thinking of Adkar in general, a key concept is the idea of a barrier point. And so Kelly, can you talk to us a little bit about what a barrier point is? You bet. So, so during an ADCAR assessment, um, participants complete a survey in the form of a Likert scale. So, so they get uh, questions and you answer either from one to five, and this measures where individuals stand on each element of the ADCAR model. So we want all of these um, elements to score at a four or above as we move forward. So as we're scoring those, um, the first element that produces a score of three or below is used to determine what the barrier point is. And this is a point where you can begin to do work with your individuals or teams. So for example, if you see on your screen, the barrier point in this case is that second A, so ability. We want to make sure that the staff has the tools available to increase their ability level and confidence in doing the work required for the change. So with just, just in the instance of ability, um, ability oftentimes can be increased through training. So we would, we would implement that in our training plan. So we'll want that barrier point to be addressed before we move on to the next point, which is reinforcement, Kim. So the, for the PMs in the room, you guys will be familiar with project plans and OCM has those too. Um, so I will walk through those and the purpose of those um, just so that we can kind of get a feel for, for what the plans look like. Um, so you will see on the screen, um, the purpose of these plans in change management is to teach our sponsors and managers to be good leaders through the change. So these documents really spell out the activities or roles that will need focus during the execution of a project or institutional change. There are five that we compile for change management. On your screen, you'll see there's the communications plan, the sponsor roadmap, the resistance plan, a coaching plan, and a training plan. And what we do when we create these is all are customized and scaled according to how risky this, the project is through those assessments, we can find that out. Yeah, so let, let's talk a little, a little bit more about communication plans in the change management context. Uh, for project deliveries, of course, we should always have some kind of communication plan. We're used to that from the PMI world, but how is what we know as a communication plan from a PM perspective different from the way we think of that from a change management perspective? That's a great question. And when I attended training, I was like, wait, what? Do we need to? <laughs> and we don't. So ideally, what we would do is we would combine the messages that would historically be on a program or a project management plan. And we would, we would kind of mix in our communication um, or our change management communications in those. So we don't want them to be two separate plans. There are a few things that, that we want to consider that we want to keep in mind when we're looking at change management communications plans, and they are, um, we want the message to be delivered in a way that is clear and understandable and from a trusted source. So what that means is messages about vision, those big messages that connect change with a sense of purpose, are best delivered by an executive level person. So the preferred sender for these kinds of messages is someone like a CEO. For those WIFA messages, the what's in it for me messages that your staff may have, like what's gonna happen and what does this mean to me, those are best delivered by a direct manager. And the same studies that I talked about, that ginormous book of research, um, those studies actually uh, went into the field and, and asked these questions. And so these preferred senders are things that have been studied. 
for these messages. Lastly, with a communications plan, we want to create a feedback loop or an improvement loop. So sometimes the messages that we send are not how they're translated. We want to make sure that we have a way to check in to see if the message was delivered in the way that it was intended by the sender. So for our projects, just to kind of close the loop and bring it back home, <laughs> our communication plans um, are designed to build awareness about our new intake. So in our plan, we'd wanna include messages from the rising star because they're our sponsor um, and gonna be that leader that people wanna hear from or the employee's direct supervisor to in inform staff members of the need and vision for the new process. Um, we want those messages to include things like how it affects the staff, and we want to make sure that we're creating status updates throughout the project as well. So with that, we create a feedback loop and a way to hear back from our coalition and staff. We want to make sure that we're hearing, you know, what, what things the wrecking ball has to say or what things that gut check has to say with that. So that's the gist of it. Kim. Right. And, and so that plan is more than just the community, just the message itself, right? It's also being very deliberate about who will be most effective at communicating each message, right? Right, right. All right. So, so I love communication plans. Let's talk about maybe another great change management tool that, that we use quite a lot, which is a sponsor roadmap, which of course is more than driving directions. It is more than driving directions. <laughs> so um, the sponsor roadmap is used as a guideline for coaches or for our, our sponsors and coaches, those, those folks, the sponsors and the coalitions throughout the life of the project. So it shows key activities and responsibilities of your primary sponsor and your business leaders and what they need to be doing to support change. So this plan emphasizes again that sponsors need to be involved throughout the life cycle of the project and stresses the importance to that. The one thing that we want to see from our sponsors that the, is that they're walking the walk. So people will notice if leaders verbally promote the change and say, oh yeah, that's great, but doesn't support that through their actions and behavior. Staff won't believe it if the leaders don't believe it or act like they believe in it. So we want to stay away from like a partial or fractional um, support of the change. The other thing um, that the sponsor roadmap does is it helps build awareness and, uh, and desire and ability. So three of those components that we saw in the ad car um, are addressed through this sponsor roadmap. I really like the, the concept of providing a roadmap to the sponsor. Say, look, these are the things that you need to do through the lifetime of the project in order to help make sure you keep supporting it. So if we go back to our use case of our intake, um, our intake process, can you talk to us what a sponsor roadmap might look like in a case like that? Right, right. So um, that's great to, you know, for us to drive this back into our project, we want to look at the project and make sure that we're setting our rising star up for success by providing them with this roadmap. So this will support them in engaging in activities required as a lead of the new intake process. It'll also include the decisions that they need to make or actions that they need to participate in and the messages that he will need to communicate throughout the project. <laughs> so it gives, it gives kind of a bullet point of all of those things um, and a checklist. And ultimately it'll help them avoid making mistakes in the implementation of the intake of the project prioritization. That's great. So just to recap, we had ADCAR as one of our tools. We talked about a couple of our change management plans, including the communications plan and the sponsor uh, roadmap. And so once we have those, our change is perfect. We get sign off and everything's great. We run off to the sunset, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. So only in a perfect world does that happen, but not always. Um, sometimes we need to look at additional plans that address factors that might arise. And so how does change management, let's talk about some of those factors, and how does change management address, say, the resistors, les resistances, those who just don't want to change? Right. So for those of us who've worked on projects, we know that resistance happens. Um, resistance is normal and should be expected. People often fear the unknown, and, and there is unknown in change. So um, one Thing that is very key when we're creating res resistance plans is listening. We want to understand what's going on underneath the surface of people's resistance, what's creating that for them. 
And one of the ways we can do this is to ask questions, a lot of them and the right ones. Um, so we wanna ask qu big questions like, do they understand the need for change? Um, does this change appear to be aligned with the organization's vision? We also wanna make sure we're, we're looking into those emotional components, like are they scared? Are they being asked to do more with less resources? Do they feel like they're losing control of something? Yeah, I like the listening aspect of that. You can't just force the change out. You have to listen to what's going on and respond. So if, let's take this one as well. Let's flip this back over and look at how would, the, how would we apply this to our, our use case where we've got our new intake process? Right, right. So we can use this to help us identify where the resistance is regarding this new intake process. Um, an example might be that Mr. Factual doesn't think that the pr project is worth the time and the money. He's asking questions like, why is this taking so long? Or can we just sit down and make a new intake form and make people do it? <laughs> um, <laughs> So, so as we're listening, we might hear messages like that, and we also might hear information from folks in the field um, or in your, your general offices that are utilizing the form. Um, so by this listening, um, it helps us know where the resistance is with our process, and it can help us mitigate that. Right. And, you know, if you think if you think or execute in an agile way, this is really key, right? We need to look for that feedback because some of that feedback can give us some opportunities for improving what it is that we're delivering and address those gaps. Right. Now, one of the things, another thing I really like about a good change management approach is that it's not just, hey, here's your change. Have a nice day. It's <laughs> here. There's a change is coming. Let's talk about how we prepare you to help manage the change for your team. And I really like that empowerment and enablement aspect. How do you, how to help you manage your team through that? So helping a manager take their team through that change journey is really a key part of this. And specifically, can you talk to us, Kelly, about how change management does that? I can. So one of, a, one of the things that a good change management approach will include is a coaching plan. Um, and what the coaching plan does is it enables managers and supervisors to become effective change agents. Uh, I cannot stress enough, managers are so important. And reasons being they're close to the employees, employees generally trust them, um, they can help mitigate resistance and they build support. So I really think of this plan as a coaching the coaches plan. It helps those managers understand changes in their role as well as their employees' roles. So it outlines, you know, the things that they need to do and also the things that their employees need to do. It helps them adapt to change that is happening to them and identify where their own resistance might be. And I think it's easy to forget, and it is oftentimes the case, that managers are not seen as employees first and managers. We do need to remember that they are employees first and they might have their own process that they go through when they hear about this change that's coming. Right, and so look, can we flip this one around too and let's talk about how you would apply this to our intake process change? I can. So, so we mentioned um, above that the coaching plan, when we talked about the rising star, that the coaching plan um, might really support that rising star's professional growth. Um, what's great about this is that the leaders and the entire organization actually get value from this. So, so the, the other people that are on the coalition and the organization as a whole um, will receive value in having a clear way forward and also that greater competency and maturity um, that's developed when it comes to change. Yeah, and for me, this is an exciting part of being uh, part of a change initiative and in that the coaching is not just about getting the team through the change, but giving them, them being the managers, giving them the skills through the coaching you're doing that they can then take forward in their professional career. So you're helping develop them as managers. It, true, very true. And so that rising star is learning new skills and it, those skills will span well beyond this particular project. And this is an exciting thing for change practitioners. For myself, it's very exciting. It gives us the opportunity to play a part in someone's professional growth and kind of up-level them for good. Now, we're talking about coaching, but what I've seen is in the number of organizations, they, they get a little confused when we talk about training and coaching. Um, training, of course, is very important, but we, um, we talk a lot about coaching here. So 
Um, can you talk a little bit about the differences between, you know, what we would typically think of as training and the coaching that we're talking about right now? I can. So absolutely. So as we discussed, the coaching plan supports managers in becoming good change agents. And so it provides them a way to navigate change. A training plan addresses the knowledge and ability that's on that ADCAR scale. So it really focuses on the skills and tools and behaviors that are necessary for the change itself to be a success. Um, what we do with training plans is we tailor them to, to your specific audiences. And there might be multiple audiences that require training um, in a change project. Um, so for example, you might have a training for managers and that might come first. And you would talk about a lot of the things that you would talk about in a staff training, but you want them to, to get that information first. And then we would follow that up with a staff training, which might include more things that are tactical for them. Um, so um, training plans should address really how people um, are successful we want them to be successful during and after the change. Um, so that's what those are for. And, and so again, flip this around to our intake process, and we would definitely want to have a uh, training plan for that. And what, what might that look like? Right, <clears throat> excuse me. So the, tra the training plan for this process itself um, would, would look a little bit like we would want to include things about how you fill out an intake form. Does it require new technical skill? That might be a set of training that we have. Um, what do you do with the results after you get them from the intake form? And any other logistics that might be surround, might surround that tool itself. All right, so we've talked about a couple of the high level plans here. And what I'm curious about, uh, let's, if we have time for it, can we squeeze in another poll? Yeah, let's We've do that. 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. All right, let's squeeze in another poll. I'm just curious, and it might be interesting for our, our attendees to hear is, where does your organization f need the most help? Or at least where do you feel like your organization needs the most help in executing changes like communication, sponsor roadmap, resistance, coaching or training, or everything? <laughs> we'll give you just a moment there. And let's, uh, let's close it. I'm really curious to see what our audience is feeling. So all the above, <laughs> it sounds like a, a pretty mostly resistance plan is up there too. Uh, and sponsor roadmap, that's interesting. All yeah, right. but what's what's really interesting is there, there were no responses for communication. <laughs> <laughs> so we're all good communicators on this call. That's awesome. That's good. So there is a lot to change management. We've only just barely scraped the service on a couple of the most common tools here. So please don't get the idea that we're trying to say this is all there is to change management. There's just so much. Now in the project management world, we know that a project is completed. All of our stuff there is done when our objectives are achieved on the project, whether that's, you know, I get closure, I get sign off, whatever. Um, but let's talk just a moment about all this material, all this capability we have in change management. Uh, when is that done? Because we, we have an ongoing reinforcement component that this, that whole reinforcement has to keep going on and reinforcing it and addressing any gaps and responding. And so you might stop and think, well, when is change management done or, or is it ever? <laughs> It's never over, Kim, <laughs> ever. Uh, <I> was hoping. <laughs> but, but it's a good point because, because your change management efforts might not actually just end at project closure. Um, the things we look for are once we deem projects successful, we wanna make sure that they're maintained and sustained. And active change management is really complete when the change has become the new norm in the organization. So those re reinforcement efforts um, that, that we participate in through change management, they've worked and the project is fully adopted. So once the business benefit is attained, then that indicates that the change is fully adopted and we can ramp down our change management efforts. And just to wrap up our presentation, can we flip back and say, okay, how do you, for our, our example where we've got our intake process, when will we probably think that something like that is done? 
Right, right. So, so when that might uh, look done is when the new process becomes business as usual. So people aren't falling back to the old way of prioritizing their projects. Um, they're not falling back to any old intake form. Everyone's gotten fully behind this new intake form and prioritization and they're using it um, a, as intended. All right. So it's not just, hey, the new form is up, it's live, there you go, have a nice day. It's, it's up, it's live, and then let's make sure all of our efforts are refined and repeated until we know everyone has gone over to the new tool, and then maybe if I've got other tools, we know that those are shut down and not used. That's right. All right. Well, that was, that was uh, really good. Let's, let's uh, wrap this up, Kelly. Do you Sounds have some key, good. Key points you'd like to cover for us? I do. So for our final thoughts, key points. Um, the things that we would like you to take away with you today is that organizational change management isn't a new trend. It's backed by scientific studies. So there are really tried and true tools that we use to ensure successful change. And speaking of success, active and visible sponsorship is key. So getting your sponsors on board and engaged will make or break your change. Also, your frontline managers are your allies. And don't forget that they're employees and people too. And change management does not end at go live. So reinforcement is paramount to continued success. So some of you might be asking, how can I learn more about this? How can <laughs> we, we Kelly? <laughs> We've got the answer right here. All right. So, um, our Colme blog is up, Managing Change, Missing Processes That Can Crumble Your Project. Also, if you'd like to learn more about the ProSci ADCAR model and other ProSci models, you can go to ProSci.com. And keep your eye open for an email from our Colme, um, Colme account. So the Colme OCM cheat sheet is going to be coming your way as well. And you can feel free to reach out to us. Um, we can schedule, excuse me, a 30 minute consultation doing so by going to PPM answers at colmaygroup.com or colmaygroup.com. Right. And, you know, ProSci has got a lot of material out there. Uh, a lot of it is you got to pay to get to, but you can also go out to um, Amazon and buy your copy of ADCAR. It's spelled just like that, A D K I R. And it's a great way to get started in this um in in your change management journey and of course as kelly said you can reach out to us anytime you want to we love to talk and nerd out about this stuff so if you just want to call us and have a chat about it ask some questions we're very open to help with that Bye. and so um that's it so this saga is to be continued uh, upcoming topics we have for future revenue uh, uh um, webinars are um, building sponsor coalitions, that's a really important and can be a challenging skill. And we've learned some great lessons from some really amazing uh, customers that we've worked with, some really sharp people and some of our colleagues as well. Some, we've got some great tricks that we can uh, share with you on how to build that sponsor coalition. Uh, we also work with a lot of people that find themselves in a position where they are almost an accidental PMO lead. They find themselves in a position where they're starting a new PMO or rebuilding a PMO. And so we'll have a, a webinar on, so you want to start a PMO and what to think about it, how to get that kicked off. And another item that we're going to have is uh, that we get asked quite a lot, since that's our specialty, is how do you select the project and portfolio management tool? And also, how do you prepare for that? And so we'll have a session on what to think about when you start that journey. All right, so um, we're gonna open up for a little bit of Q&A. We've got a couple questions that have come in. So Lauren, do you have any questions for us today that have come in? We do, we do, and I'm so excited. I feel empowered, I feel like a superhero, <laughs> and I am just ready to conquer change. Do you have your so, cape and spandex I hope everybody That's the question. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Not the spandex, Amazon is running a little slow, but they will get it to me. Um, we do have a question that was submitted in the Q&A, so I'm going to go ahead and post that for you. Um, and how is, can you see that, or how is the action plan relevant in change management roadmap for a particular project? And what if disruptions stand in between? I'm sorry, can you repeat that, Lauren? I'm getting crackles, sorry. Oh yeah, no problem. So um, the question is, how is action plan relevant in change management roadmap 
for a particular project? And what if disruptions stand in between? Kim, do you want me to take that one? Uh, if you could, yeah, go ahead. Sure. So, so when we when we create a sponsor roadmap, but we want to look at um, some things that that help our sponsor. And so the the items that might be included in that sponsor roadmap are we we always say that uh, the sponsors follow the ABCs. So we want to create um, action plans um, where they're active and visible. So they're gonna they're gonna participate in activities that keep them active and visible. We want them to build a coalition and we want them to communicate directly with the employees um, with that. So, so that would be part of the sponsor roadmap action plan. Um, and Kim, did you wanna piggyback on that? No, I think it's good. Yeah. Did that fully awesome. answer the okay, question? Okay, great. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Um, looks like we have another one that was put into the chat to the panelists. Uh, question is, what do you do if your management team is showing resistance to change? No, oh, you're in trouble then if your management team is resisting the change. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly, you can take this one too, if you like. I'll take this one too. So, so what's interesting is that we did talk about managers really as um, also remembering that they're employees. So some of the reasons that, that managers resist um, is, you know, there may be something going on with organizational culture. Um, they also may have a lack of awareness and knowledge about the change. Um, and so, so what happens with managers is that we wanna sit them down. We wanna make sure that they understand the business why of the change. They, they have a hard time getting behind things if they don't feel like it's aligned with the, their vision or mission of the, the company. So we'll do things like, you know, look at their resistance, talk through those areas, work on ways to mitigate those um, and explain the business why in a way that's clear to them. Yeah, and it's, I, I, I like that idea of if, if you're feeling that resistance from a management team, first, you have to work it individually. And sitting down one on one with uh, those sponsors or executives in question and just really get, having an open conversation about it can really inform you a lot because in a lot of organizations, the uh, management team can be driven based on MBOs. They've got certain management objectives that they have to reach. And you, what you want to be careful of and want to try to understand is that, is this change that you are asking them promote, is that in support of their objectives? Or it, it could even be counter to the objectives that they're being measured on. Um, and so it's good to have an open conversation about that and try to understand why, why there might be resistance or, you know, maybe even if it's just lack of support, but certainly if there's resistance and really take a, take a little extra time and try to understand that because that's going to pay big dividends down the line um, as you go through your change. So wise. Good question. Love it. I think we have time for one more. Um, and this one looks fantastic. So what happens if you have a sponsor who is not engaged in the change? Oh, I've never had that happen. Have you? <laughs> I've never heard that. <laughs> <laughs> what is this you're talking about? Um, do you want to take that? You want me to take that? No, no, you go ahead. Okay, so I think in this case, it's really important. I, I think this is common, first of all. And I think I do think it's important for us to have a sit down like, like Kim just mentioned um, and talk about the importance of sponsorship being engaged. Um, there are studies that we can share with them about, um, about the importance of this aspect. Um, we can also share with them tailored plans that we create. Um, so all of these plans that we talked about um, today, we can, we can share them with them. We can talk about their involvement, how it's key to the success of the project. And I think it's really important also to mention the risks of them not being involved. So, you know, X, Y, Z can happen if you're not involved. Your, your intake process, <laughs> that your new intake prioritization, project prioritization process may not move forward as you, as you want it to if, if you choose to not be involved. Right. And, and kind of going back in the spirit of our last, last question that we had is that if somebody is a sponsor of your project, they're sponsoring it for a reason. They've got something at stake 
in this project happening, whether it's, you know, that it, it's, it, whether it's, you know, um, it's contributing to their MBO or it's helping improve their part of the business um, or even just, you know, something that they want to personally accomplish. And so part of it is an education to say, look, if you're sponsoring this, you can't just sponsor and sign the check and tell us to go do it. If you really want this to happen and really identify in your conversation with them, what that benefit is that they are personally getting, uh, identify that and then just say, look, if you want that benefit or those benefits to happen, you need to provide that support through the lifetime of the project. It's not just one and done. You've got to be there through the life. And that's where your, or your sponsor roadmap can help because you can tell them, this is exactly what I need you to do at these points in the project. And it's, it's incredibly valuable to be able to do and do that. Mm -hmm. All right. And final question. I know I said the last one was the final, but this one came in and it's just too good not to answer. So uh, what about if change management as a whole is embraced initially, but then runs out of steam after the initial push has taken place? Get on with the change, but not fully support it. That, that's, so what applying, about if, that's applying change management to change management, I guess, right? <laughs> It sounds like it. You know what the nice thing about change management and, and the things yeah. that the tools that we have around change management is that, you know, we do have a, a huge amount of assessments. Um, so those ass assessments don't necessarily have to be given at the beginning of a project. Um, those assessments can be provided throughout and we do, we have created these plans. So, you know, as we know, at, things don't always go in a linear line. Like you start here and then you go to the next step and then you go to the next step. I mean, there, there may be a way, there, this may be a little cir circular in the way that we approach change oh. management. Go ahead, Kim, I'm yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, I think I might've dropped out there. I think everybody in my neighborhood is on the, everybody in my neighborhood's on the Zoom, <laughs> I, think, I think. I think everybody else is near it. Um, but you know, um, seriously though, when, when um, one, one good thing to do is maybe good, do a, quick ad car assessment and try to understand where things stopped up and just use that methodology as a way to find out are people have they kind of forgotten you know what what is the benefit are they not aware of it maybe you've had some turnover since you initially implemented change management um, and then uh, uh, kind of proceed with that and we've actually used that as a method to work with company organizations that we partner with to say to how do we introduce change management to them we say well why don't we just use ad car and so and that is as funny as that sounds that actually seems to work pretty well. So I, I kind of encourage maybe that approach. Uh, right. With that, I think we're at time. Awesome. Well, we, thank you so much. But you get, would you like to close it up, Kim? No, I'd just like to say thank you so much, everybody, for joining. Um, and you can catch, our, catch us on our YouTube for a replay. And don't forget to come check out our next webinar in our next, uh, uh, our, our next part of the series. Right. Thanks, everybody. Thanks so much and have a great weekend. Thank you for spending a little bit of time of your day with us today.